Aloha party people and welcome back to the channel. Today we go on an urban archaeology adventure. Actually it was the other day I met up with our friend Sven Kirsten, author of Book of Tiki, Tiki Pop, Tiki Modern, all those great books on the history of Polynesian pop in mainland America. And we went out to San Bernardino, California, out here in the Inland Empire, and we visited two spots. And I was actually hoping to put both of those spots in this particular video, but as I started to piece everything together and started looking up the history of these spots, there was just too much information that I didn't want to cut out. So we're going to break this up into two parts, and today you're getting number one of those two parts, Trader Island in San Bernardino. All righty. So the first thing that I did was look it up on Google Maps just to get an idea of what the area looks like and how far away it is for me so that I could plan accordingly. I also wanted to make sure that the building is still there. So if it shows up on Google Maps as a dirt lot, then I'm not going to drive out there. So here's the building as it looks on Google Maps. Looks like it's fenced up. And looks like there's a big parking lot there. Um, I'll probably park on a side street or something just to keep the attention away from me being there. Now, Trader Island was a mid-century Polynesian pop-styled bar and restaurant. As you can see in this ad, they used the building as like this tropical getaway on a tropical island. Exotic South Sea Island food and dinners, also steak, chicken, prime rib, seafood, native entertainment, and nightly dancing. Trader Island was opened by Miss Lula Herrera, and I don't know much about her other than what's in this particular article. I don't know if she has any experience as a restaurateur, but according to this article, it appears that she was really more of a contractor. And when she built this project, it was in her later years. She was 62 years old. Okay, here are a couple articles of the restaurant as it was in construction. The tikis were carved by a local man by the name of Al Kalani, and it appears that he was from Tahiti, and he was an entertainer and a carver. And according to this article, there were 15 huge tikis, 18 to 16 feet tall, quote, lying behind and to the side of the rising restaurant. 15 of them. So that must have been an incredible sight as you drove by this building. I don't know how many were on the inside, but if that was just on the outside, there must have been quite a few on the inside as well. And in the article, it's quoted as saying, nothing is spared to ensure authenticity. Here's a close-up of that tiki that's being craned into the building. And in this next slide, you'll see that our proprietor, Lula Herrera, is hosting the first meal while it is still in construction. So if you look behind the people in this photo, you will see that it is all just uh, two by fours, framing. So the building's not even done yet and she's already <laughs> hosting people there. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. She's either excited, they're excited, or both. But that's kind of a neat thing to be able to do if you know the right kind of people, right? When things are just being built and you get to be the first one in there to enjoy a meal. Now, when they opened, they were employing people from the islands to entertain their guests. So if we read this particular caption, comedy, song, and dance are provided nightly by Bill Kamaka's Ali'is. And the band members were all flown out from Honolulu and relocated to San Bernardino. So Hawaiians entertaining nightly. So they really were striving for authenticity. Here are a couple of ads. Uh, you can see here on the ad on the left, Inland Empire's only authentic Polynesian restaurant and lounge. Dying graciously amid the beauty of the islands while enjoying the gay native entertainers. Also the fabulous Galloways in our star-lighted lounge. Sounds exotic and interesting. I would have liked to check that out. And the ad on the right, learn what true island hospitality really is. Dying graciously amid the beauty of the island as Francis Owen sways and the islanders play your favorite island songs. They'll teach you how to hula. Show nights Friday, Saturday, and Monday. That's kind of weird. Friday, Saturday, and Monday. <laughs> 
I'm guessing they maybe had them on Monday nights to bring people in on a slow night. Tropical cocktail hour, 4 to 6 p.m., extra large drinks. What does extra large mean? (laughs) There's not really much ephemera from Trader Island. The only thing that I've been able to find were photos of this matchbook. There was another photo of a matchbook that had both sides of the matchbook, but I didn't include that in this video because the resolution wasn't large enough to really be able to see it properly. It, It just got distorted when I tried to increase the resolution on it. I don't know or think that there were any tiki mugs or anything from there and I wish somebody had maybe saved a menu or something but uh, I have no idea if they even served authentic tropical cocktails or even what the cocktails looked like. Here is a tiki from the inside and I don't know if it was painted initially or if that came later on in the 70s and 80s when a lot of these old Polynesian restaurants started painting their tikis. And if you look closely at the top left you'll see kind of like this Asian styled swag lamp or or hanging lamp. And I also don't know but don't think that that was part of the original Trader Island build. This probably came later on when it became Edwin Tan's Chinese Garden. And as you can see also the paper ball on the right. Here's another angle of that large tiki. And if you look beyond it, we can get an idea of what the rest of the restaurant looked like. Now, again, I don't know if this is what it looked like when it opened as Trader Island. I'm guessing that it might have been remodeled a little bit based on the style. When it was Trader Island, uh, who knows? There's no pictures that exist of if there were thatch and bamboo and, and and matted walls and all that kind of stuff what the booths looked like or anything but at this point these photos the walls are white and at this point you could see a close-up of one of the booths the seating is vinyl which was typical of you know what we saw in the 70s and 80s and the walls are white again I don't know if there was anything that was removed there but you could see like right in the center there there's a piece of bamboo sticking through that that concrete soffit and uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know if that was something that was just left over from before and if all this stuff was bamboo before, but I guess we'll never know unless someone comes up with some photos. Now we are fast forwarding maybe about five years later. So I think based on my research, it it looks like Trader Island opened somewhere around 1965. And so five years later would be somewhere around 1970. And at this point, remember, she was 62 when she opened Trader Island. She's 67-ish at this point. She is now retiring from the restaurant business. So she writes this ad that says, Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Southern California, for your five years of wonderful patronage. November 15th, I'm retiring from the restaurant business. Come help me celebrate with a farewell luau in the grand tradition. Cocktails, 60 cents from 5 to 7, to be followed by an informal luau with all the Polynesian delicacies. Now this last line, Miss Kitty Peeling, famed authorist of the bestseller, The Unwanted, will be happy to autograph her book. I don't know how that is related to Trader Island or to Miss Lula Herrera. And so I tried to do some research on that and I didn't really find anything, but I did find a listing for Miss Kitty Peeling's book, The Unwanted, on Amazon. And there's really nothing else about it. There's no photograph of the book itself. There's no uh, summary or or little synopsis of what it's about. Uh, But if you look at the timeline, 1969, we're somewhere around there, right? 1969, 1970. So it is about the same timeline. So now, Trader Island closes and is sold to Edwin Tan. And Edwin Tan opens Chinese Garden. Chinese Garden is a restaurant that, based on this article, he already had uh, on another part of town. And so this was going to be a second location. Edwin Tan is a restaurateur. So he's someone that has probably more experience than Miss Herrera had. And if you look at his ads, does it look familiar? There's the building. And look at the artwork on the left side of this ad and compare it to the artwork to this ad. 
It's very much the same with the uh, the difference of just the the uh, outer border and the text that he used. Here's a cool photo of one of the menus from Edwin Tan's Chinese Gardens. Now, again, since we don't know what the menus looked like when it was Trader Island, I don't know if he just repurposed the art or if this was something that was made new specific for Edwin Tan's Chinese Gardens. But sell the tiki's on there. And if you look at the top left, there's a little sticker, I don't know if that's like a post-it, that says 1970. So we do know the timeline is somewhere about 1970 when it changed hands. All right, I love looking at old menus. Check this out. We can see what he was serving as far as tropical cocktails. So he had a Mai Tai, a Navy Grog, a Fog Cutter, Scorpion, Dr. Funk, Zombies, Rum Punch. Uh, so the traditional stuff that we would see in tiki bars. And I love the prices. So check this out. I could get a Mai Tai for $1.60, a Zombie for $2, a Gold Cup for a buck. That could be dangerous in today's day and age. <laughs> Some cool stuff here. And so they are sorted by old favorites, some mild, some medium, some strong, and then after dinner drinks. So pretty cool stuff. Now, in the center of this menu, there is a drink called Our Special Cocoa Nut. And I know it's hard to read, but if you zoom in real close, you will see that this is a drink that is served in a ceramic coconut. So... Were those ceramic coconuts marked? That'd be awesome if somebody had one or if we found one out in the wild that was marked Edwin Tan's Chinese Gardens. And I'm also curious if any of the other drinks came in some kind of ceramic tiki mug or ceramic mug of some sort. It doesn't look like it based on the menu. You know, typically they would have illustrations in these menus of what the mugs look like, but I guess we'll never know unless somebody comes up with one. Now there were lots of ads for Trader Island, but when it was Edwin Tan's Chinese Garden, there was only two ads that I was able to find. This is one of them, in addition to that first one that I showed you. I don't know what the date is on this one, but uh, dinners were $2.25, lunch was $1.50, and now featuring famous Hawaiian entertainment. Curious to know if they uh, were the same entertainers that were there performing when it was Trader Island. If you continue to employ them or if this is a whole new group of people that he brought in on his own. Again, something we will probably never really know. Now over the years, the restaurant changed hands. Like Trader Island before, as Edwin Tan's Chinese Gardens, it lasted about five years. And in 1975, it became the Imperial Palace Inn. I don't think that there's anything online about the Imperial, Imperial Palace Inn. I haven't seen any menus or mugs or even photographs of it at that time. And then in the mid-1980s, it became the Mandarin Garden. And again, I haven't seen anything historical, postcards or menus or otherwise, when it was the Mandarin Garden. And in 2008, the building became Scorpion Sports Bar and Grill. Nothing exists for that either. 2008 wasn't really that long ago, so I, I checked Yelp and a few other sources online and I didn't find anything. And by 2013, the building was vacant. And here's a picture of the building in 2013. As you can see, there are no fences, no gates, nothing like that. The building still looked relatively in good shape, but it was vacant. Before going out there, I wanted to do a little bit more research and see what I could find. There's really not much on Trader Island or Edwin Tan's Chinese Gardens. critique has got a very small piece of information about it. But what's interesting is in 2015, there's an article about Trader Island being for sale. And a little write-up about the history of Trader Island and Edwin Tan's Chinese Gardens. And at that time, it stated the building is listed at $450,000 and that it's been on the market for quite a while. But as time has passed, it has not been kind. And today, as of December 27th, 2020, it's valued at $107,543. So my guess is that it probably needs all kinds of repairs because it's been neglected. And truth be told, it's not in the safest part of town. So what does it look like today? In 
it's such a great A-frame example of the three yeah. A-frames. The three A-frames. So it looks like there was a water feature here. Yeah, the classic. There's a really nice masterful rendering. Check out the bridge to the main entrance, which probably used to sit over a little pond or something, which I'm guessing was right here. And there's a staircase here that leads up to a second floor entrance. Don't know what it is, if that's a fire escape or if that's some kind of a private entrance to a banquet room. You can see the dry rot damage here on the main A-frame. Here's a shot of the back side of the building part of the parking lot. This whole area probably had a bunch of tiki's. If there were 15 tiki's around the outside of the building, they probably surrounded it. There's another angle of the back side with part of one of the rear A-frames. You can see the property is now surrounded by wrought iron. And check out what I think is Feather Rock. So I guess emulate lava. Well, that's what I have on Trader Island. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like and a subscribe. And I do have another urban archaeology video coming up for you guys that I did earlier this day. Also out in San Bernardino, California. We'll have that up for you soon. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, cheers and aloha.